everyone, it's April Garwood from Anandamoon Studio. I'm out on my deck today and I'm going to be uh, dyeing the fiber that I got in this month's Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club box. So I'm not really started, I don't have it in the dye pot yet, but I've got uh, my fiber is soaking in here with just a little bit of dish soap and then here I have a, a pot on a like for I don't know what do they call those it's like a, a pot and a burner that's made for like deep frying a turkey um, and so that's what I'm using to heat my water so that I can work outside uh, usually it's not a good idea to breathe in dye powder because you don't want to breathe of course any particles into your lungs so um, I work outside when I dye and so that's why I've got the turkey fryer pot on the burner but um, even if I only have that valve just slightly open it can get really hot and like boil really hard so at some point if it starts to boil I'll probably turn it off and let it cool for a while and turn it back on but anyway so I don't have the dye or the fiber in the pot yet but I'm just getting started and uh, I'll check in on the video here and there as I'm taking steps so that you can see uh, what the process is like all right so my wool and uh, there's a white wool and then the brown in here is a camo silk blend and my wool has been soaking for about 30 minutes, so it's about ready for me to get my dye bath ready. My dye bath is this, uh, like I told you earlier, um, turkey fryer setup, and I've started it heating, and I'm starting to see a few bubbles, so it's probably getting warm. So that's perfect. The next step is that I have this bowl and just a, it's just an old kitchen bowl and a plastic spoon that I use when I'm dying. And I'm gonna dip a little bit of water out of my pot and put in here. And then I need to um, put the dye powder that's in here into my bowl. So let's see if I can set my tripod here where you can see what I'm, all right. All right, the dye powder is in here, and let's see, what was the color? They said I got Mountain Aqua. So I'm gonna put this dye powder in here. And again, work outside when you use dye powder. Ooh, that's a really pretty color. Work outside or make sure that everybody indoors is wearing a mask when you work with dye powder so that you're not breathing it in. Put that in here, throw that away in a bit, and I'm going to stir this. Okay, and then I'm going to add that to my dye bath. that around and try to get most of the dye out without burning my hands because it's definitely steaming now it's hot all right so I've got that and now I'm ready to add the um, the fiber let's see again if I can set my camera up some way that you'll be able to watch So I'm gonna take my fiber here this is the Polworth the white Let that drip for a minute. And then we're gonna add that in the dye bath. And then this is the camel silk. I'll try to gather all of that. And let it drip for a minute. And then we'll add that in the dye bath. Okay, so those are in. And I'm gonna grab a uh, spoon here. 
this is a pasta spoon. I actually really don't recommend this for fiber because the fiber gets all snagged on those, but I am going to use it to kind of push this down into the die. Now, the instructions say that if I want a really even color that I should stir it every few minutes. I actually really like blotchiness in my dyeing, so I'm probably not going to stir it. I'm just going to let it do what it does. All right, so there's that, and then where did my instructions wind up? There they are, in my pocket. All right. Oh, it's really hot. This is a west-facing deck. It's hot out here. Okay, so it says stir gently but often to dye fiber evenly. I'm not going to do that. Dye it for 30 minutes. So that's what I'm going to do next is set a timer for 30 minutes. And at that point, I want to look and see if all the color has been absorbed out of the water. And if there's still color in the water, then I will probably let it go a bit longer. And But if it looks like all the... All the uh, dye has been soaked into the fiber then I'll be ready at that point to rinse it a little bit and hang it to dry. Hello so it hasn't been 30 minutes yet but my uh, dye pot is uh, definitely boiling and uh, it tends to do that this turkey fryer pot gets super hot so I um, just a bit ago I turned off the gas for a little bit and it stopped boiling and I waited a few minutes and I've turned it back on and boom, it's already boiling again. So I'm gonna leave it off a bit longer, have it back on, it's gonna kind of be back and forth. 30 minutes. And so I'm looking at my dye pot here. Um, there's definitely still dye in the water. So I'm gonna let it stay in longer. I. Uh, the water was boiling really hard and so I actually turned off the gas for a little while um, and then I tried turning it back on after I waited a few minutes and it started boiling like really hard again right away so I turned it off for a bit longer but it's been off a little while now so I'm gonna turn the gas back on for a little bit and let this um, stay in the hot water longer and see if we can absorb more of the dye. I might also add a little bit of vinegar to the water to see if that helps it absorb. So we will catch back up in a little while and see how it's doing. Hi there. Well, I have had my uh, wool and the camo silk blend in the dye pot for an hour now. And uh, at times it's boiled really hard and I've had to turn off the gas and other times it's just been steamy. So that's probably not ideal, but um, you can see that there's still plenty of dye in the water. And we have really, really hard well water here. I mean, like crazy hard well water. And uh, so it's very possible that that has a lot to do with why my dye hasn't all absorbed. I also wasn't particular about putting in just the right amount of water that they called for the instructions. So, um, you know, don't assume that the dye is no good because my experience didn't uh, turn out just ideal. But anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and call it and uh, I'm going to let this cool for a while and then I'll rinse it a bit and take it out and you can kind of see, you know, how it looks. I still think it's going to be really pretty even if all of my dye didn't get absorbed. So, um, Later when I have this fiber out of the dye bath and then especially once it's dry uh, and then again maybe uh, when I spin it up I will um, come back and add a little bit more to this video so you can see how the project progresses but that's where we are for today. I used some old tongs of ours to pull my wool out of the dye pot. And now I'm going to rinse it and keep rinsing until I can't get any more color out of it. I mean, so far it's looking pretty good, but there's not a lot of color coming off the fiber. So that's a good thing. My fiber is still really hot. But anyway, so I'm going to rinse this until I can't get any more dye to come out of it, and then I'll hang it to dry. Now I've uh, rinsed 
my wool and my camel silk blend and uh, my rinse water was coming out clear and I've hung them up to dry on this uh, laundry drying rack that I have and uh, I'm really pleased the the fiber maintained a lot of color even though my dye bath still had quite a bit of dye in it but you can also see how the the fibers dyed differently this is the Woolworth I think wool and this is the camel silk blend and the camel silk blend is a lot more green so I'll probably blend these together in the in the finished yarn but the the coloring definitely came out differently for the two different fibers so that's going to stay there to dry and then once it's dry I can start working with it and decide how exactly I'm going to spin it well, here is my finished fiber after my dyeing yesterday. Uh, this is the Polworth wool and it is really nice and lofty and it's a really bright, beautiful bright blue color. And this is the Camel Silk blend which as I pointed out uh, in the drying, this Camel Silk turned out to be a much greener color and uh, my roving got very kind of disorganized and messy during the dye process but it's still nice and soft and uh, so those are my my dyed fibers and I look forward to spinning them up and making something beautiful with them. Next I used a blending board to blend the two fibers that I dyed together along with a little bit of white pineapple fiber and a little bit of Angelina. And last of all, I used my spinning wheel to spin the fiber into singles and then ply them into a two-ply yarn. And this is my finished yarn. It turned out really beautiful. So I'm all finished showing you my experience of dyeing this fiber. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my, sh my channel, and share your spinning experiences with me in the comments. Thanks so much.